Today, I'd like to talk to you about four things. The first thing I'd like to talk with you about is networking. And I thought I was a good networker, and then I met Mike, your next speaker. He is amazing. So I want to talk about networking and how that can actually help you grow your business, and I'll give you some tips on that. We're going to talk a little bit about risk-taking. There's no way I'd be standing on the stage speaking to you today without taking some risk. We're going to talk about that. I want to talk about entrepreneurial spirit. I hang out with a lot of entrepreneurs. I um, enjoy people that run and own and grow businesses. And so I want to talk about that spirit and how you can try to grow that with yourself, but also in your business. And then finally, we're just going to talk about growth. How can we grow? So my first thing on, on networking is you really have to build your network before you need it. And here's a quote for you, but business networking is some of the most cost-effective way that you can actually grow your business. Because other types of promotion actually usually cost you money, but business networking is a great way to grow your business. And I'm sure there's a lot of great networkers here in, in the audience. So for me, when I'm walking in and talking to people, the first thing I need to make sure I'm doing is I'm congruent and I'm authentic. That they don't think I'm there to just hustle their business card and try to sell them something, but I'm really trying to make an authentic connection with them. And I keep this kind of pie chart in mind because my tone and my body language and my facial expressions have to match my words. And I, I also choose my words carefully. So that's one thing. I also want to introduce you to a term that I absolutely love. And, you know, today we have many, many acronyms. We've got so many acronyms to remember, right? And WOO is another acronym. WOO stands for winning others over. And I love the first definition here, because I love to be wooed romantically, right? But the last one's what I want you to pay attention to, which is the fifth one, which is your persuasive skills, your ability to woo others. If you have a challenge with working with um, just networking, one of the things you can try is just a compliment. I call them conversation starters or communication starters. But starting with a compliment from somebody else always works, and it's really easy. And the other thing is to try to kind of find some commonality. So making that common link and finding something common about each other builds those relationships and builds that network. And it can be very quick. Next, I'd like to talk with you about some risk taking. And for me, this is the only way I've been able to actually accomplish what I wanted to do. And there's risk taking, there's risk adversity if you're adverse to risk, and there's also risk tolerance. How much risk can we take? The first thing on risk taking is being able to make sure that you've got that expectation, you think you can overcome it. Some other people think you're crazy, but you think, nope, I can do it. The second thing, and we've been talking a lot about this, is constant learning. Constant learning. So for me, setting has never been a delight, but I'm a constant learner. I like to learn from others. I like to take classes, I like to challenge myself. And for me, just learning from my peers and other people are quite important. So continuing to take risk and challenge myself on what can I go out and learn? What else can I go out and, and challenge myself to do? What certifications should I get? What things should I try to accomplish? Third thing on risk taking is embracing change. And this is quite tricky because we as humans, we, our animal type is human, and we are habitual animals. We are very habit forming. We probably sleep on the same side of the bed. We probably have the same routine in the morning. We like to have our coffee before we have the banana muffin or the banana muffin before we have our coffee. We usually park in the same parking space when we go to work. So we're very habitual and it's hard for us to break some of these habits. And I was doing some research on habits, and you know the whole saying, how many days do you typically think it takes to make a habit? Anybody know? 21, 21 days. <laughs> but there's now research from psychologists that say that it's actually more than two months. It's about 66 days is the average. So changing our habits are quite hard to do. So if you want to form a new habit, you're going to have to actually form a new pattern, a new synopsis in our brain that attaches. So since we're so habitual, it's about being comfortable with change and with uncertainty. And when you take risks, there's a lot of uncertainty. And so if you address that and understand how much risk you're taking and that it's not going to probably, here's the plan, but best made plans, right? You make the plan and then you always have to change everything. The fourth thing about risk taking for me, and again, this is this folk, fork in the road for me when I had to make the decision of do I pack up and go home or do I start a business in a foreign country? is trusting my gut instinct. 
I use my intellectual abilities and my research abilities, and I try to get everything researched and see what all the pros and cons are and the ups and downs, but in the end, I have to check my gut. And I have to say, what does my instinct tell me? What does my instinct say here? What is the right pattern? What's the right way? What do I just naturally know? If I close my eyes and I don't overthink it, what's the right thing? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you a little bit now about entrepreneurial spirit. And I have three things that have really impacted me in terms of my ability to build the network, but also keep entrepreneurship and this entrepreneurial spirit alive for me. The first one is that I found a peer group that I aspire to be like. And my peer group is this thing called EO, Entrepreneurs Organization. And it's for entrepreneurs, it's for people who are founder, co-founder, majority, shareholder. So you have to take some risk. So I'm constantly looking for a peer group where there are people that I aspire to be like, and I aspire how they live their life, the risks that they take, what they're doing, how, where they're going. That's my first one on this entrepreneurial spirit is find the peer group that you aspire to be like and hang out with them. The second thing that I did that was really instrumental was I found a mentor. And for me, my definition, there's a lot of definitions out there, and I use Google a lot. A mentor is somebody who will spend time with me and not charge me for it and expound their wisdom and experience to help me so that I can see things that I'm faced with in my life in a different perspective and also use their wisdom to learn from them. The first one is get a peer group you aspire to be like. The second one is convince someone that's a mentor you respect to spend time with you. And the third thing that helped me was I hired a coach. Are there any tennis fans in the, in the audience? Anybody like tennis? So Andy Murray, I was reading up on him, he at one point had seven different coaches. He had a backhand coach, he had a regular coach, he had a fitness coach, he had an endurance coach, he had a nutritionist. So if the best class world athletes have coaches, why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't I? So entrepreneurial spirit, people who question have entrepreneurial spirit. And people who are constantly trying to figure out how they can solve problems, how they can make something better, and they're not happy with the status quo. So that is another thing that I feel is questioning is how can this be better? How can I make it work better? How can I re-engineer it? And I'm not a big proponent of saying if it's not broken, don't fix it. But I also want to make sure that I'm continuing to improve, continuing to improve. The other one here is optimistic. I always see, OK, well, what's the, what's the worst thing that could happen? But what's the best thing that could happen? What's the best outcome we can look at here? So optimism is quite important. Surrounding yourself with people that are optimistic helps you to get things done and overcome obstacles quicker. Here are some of the principles and philosophies that I really like to live by. I like to do something that scares me every day. If I'm status quo, I get bored, I get despondent. So I'm constantly pushing myself to do something that scares me. The other thing is I never like to negotiate against myself. If I talk myself out of it and say, oh, the answer is going to be no, then I've just negotiated against myself. So I, even if I think the answer is no, I always ask, because I'm going to miss 100% of the shots I don't take. Another sporting analogy. The third one is build your network before you need it. Again, you're going into sometimes new territories, new areas, new cities. So I always like to constantly get in and find out who's in the chamber, find out who's there, and grow my business through referrals. And then finally, you never know who your next customer is going to be. The person that you're talking to or interacting, just like this gentleman said in a casual, biz casual way, is the person that might be the key to whoever you want to connect with or whoever you need to talk to. And sometimes if you just share problems, the other thing I've realized is if I ask for help, people help me. But I have to admit that I need help. So asking for help is quite important. But the most important question that I want to ask you is, what action will you take as a result of this talk? What action will you take as a result of this conference? What are you going to go home and change? What are you going to go home and try to figure out to do differently? Better, quicker, cheaper, smarter? Or harder, better, stronger, faster? What will you do differently tomorrow and then repeat it for 21 to 33 to 66 days to embed a new habit? Thank you very much.